Hi, my name is Mansi Dahal and I go to the School of the Art. Um, my question to the Prime Minister Oli would be, like we've been talking about, a vast majority of Nepali youth have been working abroad due to the limited opportunities in Nepal. Um, you and your government has been in power for over decades now. What is this not a concern for you and the government? Because as an emerging nation, I see this as a huge threat to not have the youth in the country. Secondly, you have been saying that you want to, you think the youths are important and they need to come back. But why is the older generation like you and other leaders not willing to step down or aside to let the youth run the country? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jonas and I'm a graduate of the School of International and Public Affairs. My question goes to the geography you already talked about. You're located between the two most populated countries in the world. How do you balance the relationship with both countries on political and economic levels? Thank you. Thank you. One more and then... Thank you. My name is Kalen Zborowski Fenster. I'm a freshman in Columbia College majoring in political science. My question is regarding rural life in Nepal and out migration. Since 2021, Nepal has negative population growth rates in over 30 mountain districts. As rural areas are depopulating, urban areas are growing equally as rapid, with this gap increasing by the thousands every passing day. Nepal citizens of rural communities have come out and said that the reasons for this outmigration can be boiled down to lack of economic opportunities in education and health care. Also, rain-fed agriculture has been impacted uh, due to climate change and disease, and this has de-incentivized the production of important goods that vitalize the Nepali economy. With these grim prospects, rural populations have been moving elsewhere. You said earlier that a possible plan to combat this outmigration is to increase agricultural-based jobs, but yet these agricultural-based jobs and the communities are the very ones that are leaving due to lack of resources. My question is, as someone who comes from a rural town myself, how does the Nepali government plan on prioritizing these rural populations which are pivotal to the nation? Thank you. So, so, I can okay. sum it up a little bit, but yeah. I think one of the aspects that has been said, although the balance between China and India is a different one, is the fact of how do you incentivize the rural, the young, to participate, whether in the leadership or in work? In my opinion, first of all, we have to love our country. If I cannot abandon my mother, if she is even poor, I have to look after her problems and try to solve. And if she is poor, I shouldn't act. I must try to change the situation. We are, and particularly the youths, are not to run away from the problems, but to face the problem and get victory over them. Every country was poor. There were no facility. When, when in our country there was education, there was medicine, there was treatment, so many things. So many countries were not formed yet. So, we have very glorious history, but because of different selfish rulers and autocratic systems, we were We didn't get opportunity to develop. And people were... That era was dark. We see dark era of autocracy. autocracy. And people didn't get opportunity to, to get rid of that. But finally, people toppled the autocratic system and brought back democracy. Democracy is not a gift. 
It is a fruit. After the fight of the people, they got. Similarly, we can. Even now, I realize that there are problems, but we can resolve. And we can, we have to be self confident. We can. And so far, the incentive to the youth is uh, even at the adverse situation, adverse situations are not for always. They are until then, until when we tolerate them. If we reject, then they come to an end of And as I mentioned before too, we have provided opportunities to the youths, the startups, loans, and other opportunities as well. Yes, of course. The salary in Nepal is not high. But uh, the market is also very cheap. Price hike is not that much. We can buy things in a very cheaper rate. And so far, another trend asks another question that how we are balancing both joint neighbors. Neighbors are neighbors. Uh, there is a saying that uh, you cannot change your neighbor. So we have to understand that we cannot change our neighbors and our neighbors also cannot change their neighbors too. <laughs> uh, so we must deal with them. They are not our enemies. They are our friends. So with friends, we have to put our problems, grievances, demands, whatever, and whatever our feeling is, and what problems we are facing, we can talk to them frankly, candidly, openly, share our views with them, and through the discussion, through the Dialogues, we can reach a point with the proof, with the facts, and being unbased on the truth, we have to deal with them. So we can. But we cannot give up our national interest, sovereignty, independence. Freedom is a must for us. It's very, very important. And Nepali people must be, I would like to tell Nepali students, we are here, must be proud that we have no independent day. Because we were never colonized. We were always independent. So, it's a matter of glory. And that that glory we have to translate into a prosperous country. And we have to make our people happy. And my government's emphasis now is to, our aim is, our goal is prosperous Nepal, happy Nepal. We want to make Nepal a prosperous one and the Nepali people, happy people. That is our goal. And for this, uh, I don't take as uh, two joint neighbors with different political and political systems and economic systems, etc. As a negative aspect, but that is positive thing. 
we have, if we can produce, we have already two huge markets of the world. So we, we can use them, those markets, if we produce. If we do not produce and we, if we just import and just we become consumers of others, markets of others, consumers of others, and our small country cannot uh, maintain that.